Hey there, 3D enthusiasts. I'm Mr. Steve, and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, a big welcome to you, and thank you for stopping by. I'm all about making the invisible visible in 3D. So today, I've got a bit of a showdown between two giants in the 3D software world. You guessed it, one of them is Blender and Maya, but not just any comparison. Oh no, no. We're here to showcase how Blender has been rapidly advancing, seemingly defying the odds, and winning the hearts overall of the 3D world. And so let's take a look at Maya, industry leading software that has been around for decades and hasn't had as much growth, but recently has been forced into it. Okay, let's start with the current champion of the 3D community and the community's heart, Blender. It's open source software, free, and has been packing quite a punch recently. But is it just because it's free, or is there more to this software? Now, back to Maya for just a moment. The industry-leading software that can be found pretty much everywhere in movies like The Matrix, The Walking Dead, the series, and you could even find this in Spider-Man and all the major games. So whereas we don't see the program of Maya disappearing anytime soon, we absolutely see the competition. And now Blender has been getting a lot of attention, a lot of updates, and we're talking about a wave of improvements that almost all areas of modeling, rendering, animation, you name it, they're all community driven. There's tons of commits that are out there and people working on this day and night. And that is an absolute testament to the power of an open source ecosystem that the Blender community and the foundation provide. Now, if you take a look over at the Autodesk and Maya website, you'll see the price scheme for the uh, software itself, which is could be like a monthly payment. And just to kind of contrast that, Blender uh, basically is a, a full pipeline. You know, you can come in, you can model, you can sculpt, um, you can finish your product with texturing, you can go through, you can do animation, uh, you can absolutely use a geo nodes based system to create mesh environments and procedural non destructive environments. And then you can render it and composite it. You know, a lot of post processing is, is available in there and it's all free. And it's actually getting quite powerful. And I think that's why uh, Maya is kind of stepping up their game just a little bit. And we know that Blender 4.0 is going to explode in the industry with not only the simulation nodes, but they've got plans. And I'll just jump over to the Blender 4.0 release notes real quick. And there's really not a whole lot going on just yet, but there's going to be some game changing uh, situations here where now Blender 3.6 and up is the only compatibility for Blender 4.0. So if you make something in Blender 4.0, you cannot open it in 3.5 or 3.4 or any earlier versions and that's because they're changing the API in a way that is going to open them up for a better progression of features like the animation, the geometry nodes, and the physics which is, is going to be kind of based on uh, a, a gradual progression, simulation nodes, and they're going to bring those up together which makes a lot of sense. Now, Blender, once considered the underdog, is rapidly growing and improving and has game-changing popularity that is steeped in ongoing development, largely thanks to its incredible community support. And the least of none of these is hard surface modeling, which goes a long way and shows a... gives a a lot of credit to the developers for putting in the functionality to achieve results like this, like this. And they absolutely rival any professional work done in Maya by providing Blender's capabilities and those are continually expanding and impressing us all. So is Blender the future of 3D modeling, rendering, and animation? It might be too soon to call, but one thing's for sure, it's giving the competitors a serious run for their money 
And for us 3D enthusiasts, that means more choices, more tools, and more fun. Now, this is an add-on, and this is what's making Blender so amazingly powerful. And this is called Delogix PBR Painter Pro, and it can be found on the Blender market. And yes, by going to pick this up, you do support the channel, and I have a big thanks to shout out to everyone who has purchased Philogix in the past and currently. So I picked up Philogix PBR Painter Pro about a year ago and never looked back. I went back and did some Substance Painter tutorials, and it's very powerful. It's a good program, but P Philogix PBR Painter Pro has come to a position where the texturing workflow is so easy. I don't have to export from Blender, and I can stay in what I'm doing. Now, I've got a full playlist on this, and I do collaborate with the creator, and I make my own add-ons, so we kind of like touched bases about a year ago and now I get to beta test like I said and well they've got a new version coming out which is going to blow your socks off uh, right now the things you can do and you'll just have to kind of check out one of my tutorials um, is that you can layer things just like you would in substance painter and understanding the capabilities is a little bit more of like a selling point for me so when I went to go pick this thing up a year ago um, the live bake system and so you can see normals your ids your ao your curvature maps a lot of different things and then you have subcategories for each one of those and it's going to automatically bake all the ids of all the parts of the mesh and so it's a pretty amazing program and yeah just a little quick plug for it um, now let's jump back over all right so while you're making a decision that maya or blender is right for you let me show you an upgrade to the i2m add-on i'm working on a procedural landscape tool that is going to have some pretty cool features so as you can see i've got some volumetrics in here but they're really hard to see uh, when you're modeling so i've got a switch built in and, and none of this is set up yet um, you know over here but once you've done that you can now scale based on the proximity of collections and an object that you put into the scene and then the fog will scale over the trees and then the trees can scale individually and then you can put whatever you want into the tree collection as well to get some really cool results now i've got some different node graphs in here that are really going to help you out and give you a lot of power and a lot of control over mountains and valleys inside of the add-on so if you were just to come over and this will all be an add-on form when it's done and highly organized i can actually procedurally move the mountain without changing the actual mountain terrain and create some different topology. Now, it's also gonna be based on Voronoise and Noise. So you'll be able to uh, kind of like change these things as you wish, and there'll be a grand scale here for the mountains. So you can kind of bring the mountain up and change it with the different noise patterns and move it anywhere you want. And then you'll be able to put a water plane in and very quickly have a full environment. That's all for today, folks. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this, and drop a comment below with your thoughts. Are you Team Blender or Team Maya? Or maybe both. Let's get the conversation going. And until next time, keep creating and may the pixels be wide.